So today is stage two of Adriatica Ionica. It's a three or four day stage race. I'm going to kick off straight away with the attacks from Jefferson Cepeda, followed by Pipo Zanna, um, as well as Paul Double. Now, Paul Double's been on the channel quite a lot of times. Um, he's got some big results recently. He got top six um, in Apennino. And yesterday he was in the KOM jersey. So he's in the green jersey here following the early move. This looked like it could be the one. So the, the finish today was Monte Grappa, which is like a 25K climb at 5%. There's steeper sections um, because then like on the whole generally because there's some downhills and all the rest of it. Um, but Cepeda's really putting it on now. Um, you can see making it super, super hard um, on this part. It's not actually crazy, crazy steep at the moment. Um, but yeah, for, pull double looks, looks strong here following the moves. Um, but maybe might pay for it later. So you can see the, the group gets brought back to here with Aolo on the front. They, had, um, the lot, they won it last year with Lorenzo Fortunato. Astana are here as well. They're sort of the main world tour team. There's not really anyone else too big. Um, there's also the Italian national team, which has some of the Gazprom riders who are also strong, like Maricelli, um, and Christian Scaroni, who's in the leader's jersey at the moment. Uh, Pipo Zanna is in the white young rider's jersey for Bardiani HSF Faisane. And we also have um, Nat Nal Tetsfazion. Now, that's probably why you clicked on this video. Now, Tetsfazion is someone I've been... You know, uh, keep my eye on for a long time. He's always got some really good results in some of the Italian races. Hasn't necessarily always had the win, but it was always there and thereabouts. Um, he's a different rider. So here we skip ahead to 11 kilometers go. Not much happened, but you can see Paul Double's now um, out the back. 13 seconds to go. Bardiani are going for the leader's jersey because they basically know that people Zana um, has dropped Scaroni. So they're in a good chance here. And you can see for um, for Tets Fatson, he's still got one teammate, which is Cepeda. Um, for Androni or drone hopper as they're now called so the pace keeps going as you can see here getting harder and harder but Tess Fatson I think is really underrated in some ways um because you know he hasn't got the massive massive win but he's got a really good sprint and he's a lot better climber than someone else he's sort of similar obviously there's at the both air train comparisons are made to um Gamay. he's worse of a sprinter still a good sprinter but a lot more of a climber um he can get over like this climb here which is Okay, it's not the hardest climb in the world, but it's pretty decent. Some ropey lines coming into this into this corner, but it, it's decent nonetheless. And it shows that, you know, in, in the tour, you know, when the Suns have those false flat finishes like this year in Mejev, he could definitely get a result. I believe he's signing um, for Trek for many years to come, which is good. Um, but yeah, he's looking really good. So you can see here, Cepeda goes on the front, drilling it. And he knows that Tess Fatsion obviously is just going to sit in, um, trying to discourage attacks as much as possible. And I guess also trying to take time in GC. Zana looks really strong, actually. I, I rate Zana a lot. I think he, he will go well to her at some point. Um, he's still super young. Now you can see Tess Fatsion is looking pretty relaxed, puts his sunglasses there. And the way Tess Fatsion pedals and the like is um, is pretty stylish. He looks good on a bike. Um, and yeah, he's like quite... He's surprisingly big, actually. I think he's not as light as you think. Here's um, Promsky, I believe it is, um, who is on the attack uh, for Astana. Um, there's also some other Conti riders here as well, um, such uh, who have had a good result as well in the past. Um, but basically, Cepeda is realizing now, okay, I probably don't have the legs to drop anyone. Promsky's looking okay. Zana's looking good as well. Uh, so probably in reality, we do just need to to calm it down, um, get on the front and basically make sure that Tets Fatsion can take the win because, you know, there's probably bonus seconds on the line as well, which will help. Um, and in addition, uh, Tets Fatsion can get bonus seconds on the flat stage as well. So here we go, coming up to the finish um, and Tets Fatsion is still there. Cepeda's on the front with his fit socks. I really like the uh, drone hopper socks. And here, we're well, coming to the line. I mean, I think everyone knows the story. You're going to get torched. Um, so here, Tets Fatsion moves up onto Cepeda's wheel. Um, looking pretty good, to be fair. Um, and we're going to have a nice little fade. You can see the pace isn't crazy high. Like, you know, they're all bunching up behind. They've all got Tets Fatsun's wheel um, trying to, you know, obviously get the big draft. And it's a flattish finish. It's not that hilly, to be honest. That's a very inconsiderately parked Porsche for the poor boy from uh, Euskatel, Mikel Bizcara, who, again, is another classic pro Conti boy who's looking good as well. Um, and you can see the nod of the head saying, yeah, yeah, I'm good. Let's let's keep it going. You can see from where he is on the chain ring, it's still, you know, steepish. He's on the small ring uh, and quite far up it. So it's definitely not flat. Um, and again, I think it goes to show that Tets Fatson has actually got a big future as maybe more of a puncher, maybe an Amstel Gold or something like that. He's raced more of the Italian races because Drone Hopper aren't going to get an invite to Liège or the like. Um, but I think and potentially that's more where his future is. I think he could also go for... 
maybe intermediate sprints competitions or like things like uh, similar to that. I'm not sure the green jersey because I don't think he has enough for the bunch sprint, but he's definitely someone who, if you get in a, a break, especially in the tour or the Giro, um, he could get a really res good result. And I also think maybe in the Vuelta as well, uh, on some of those hillier finishes, he could also do well on the sort of like short, sharp ones, but we're, we're yet to see. Um, it reminds me a bit of Ethan Hage in some ways of his characteristics, but probably more, again, more of a climber than anything else. I think, um, like obviously his sprint is really good, but I think his ability to go up climbs is is uh, is very high. Um, but yeah, I'm yet to know about his time trialing. Obviously, Jordan Hopper don't have good TT bikes, so I assume it's terrible at the moment. But however, if there's some investment, maybe you can also become more of a time trialist and then maybe GC, I don't know. But I think my, my instincts with him is more just as uphill, punchy finishes, um, as well as sort of easier mountain finishes where he could win. Like you think Ben O'Connor was winning in um, the Tour this year. He, he definitely could have competed on a stage similar to that, maybe, maybe a bit hilly, but you know what I mean, that sort of stage. 300 metres to go, Cepeda on the front and Tess Fatso on behind. He's got us looking out. Zanna goes out the saddle. They both know, to be honest, like that Tess Fatso should have this. And I think um, he's on the drop, he's on the hoods, looking pretty relaxed, 200 metres to go, you know, it'll go from here, probably be a 15, 20 second sprint, so wait as long as possible, I don't think he was too worried about getting the jump on people, to be honest, if anyone did, because I think he knows he has the gas, and so there's, um, Zana goes straight past, Tets Fazion is just like, no worries, I'll hop on your wheels, it's a long way to go, and then look at this, the sprint is just, it's just different level, and it? it's just like, it's not, it's not really that close, to be honest, because as soon as he actually comes around the corner, it's just like, yeah, he's he's put a big big gap into you, and you have to come the long way around as well. I think that's the other thing is like it wasn't that he was, you know, had the short way around, and the Eritrean fans behind are going absolutely bonkers. But anyway, cheers for watching. Hope you enjoyed this video. Share some more content from this week, um, and we'll see you in the next one.